Welcome to Virtual Lunch in the Exhibit Marketers Cafe. We are back. We took a week off last week, but we're back now. So always good to see everybody here in the cafe. If you are one of our regulars, welcome back. It's always fun to see familiar, fa well, I can't say see familiar faces, uh, except when they pop up with your comments, but <laughs> it's always fun to have um, some familiar uh comments and familiar names pop up. But anyway, um, and if this is your first time in virtual lunch, welcome. We're glad to have you. We meet typically every Tuesday, at least for now, that may change in 2021. We'll see. Um, but anyway, we are glad to have you. I see Rama is here from Promotions in San Diego. So always good to have you on board, Rama. You're one of our regulars for sure. Um, so we will be getting started here with our uh, special guest, which is an unusual special guest for this week. Um, you're used to having, those of you who are regulars, you're used to having Alan behind the scenes helping out and putting in our links for us and all kinds of other things. But uh, today he's our special guest. So that means a slight change of plans. Those of you watching on YouTube will be able to find our links for today in the uh, description section. So if you just click that show more, you'll be able to see all the links for today. Those of you on Facebook will have to add those later. So, um, so I since our topic today is creativity, I thought I would just ask, what is your creative superpower? <laughs> so put that in the comments. And I see that Jen is here from Exhibits in Georgia. So welcome. Good to have you here. So go ahead and type in your creative superpower if you want to share that. And we'll get to the uh, creativity focus here in just a little bit, except that some of our links are going to pertain to that as well. So our first link, and this is kind of weird for me because I'm used to like getting ready to click them and um, put them on, on the screen. But um, the first one was actually shared by Nicole Burkhart, which was our special guest a few weeks ago. Um, it's called Pay with a Post-it. And it's a really clever promotion, a coffee house in Australia decided to do, you know, the pay it forward idea, but they decided to do it a little bit differently. So they had people pre-buy uh, a drink for someone else and then write a note for that person on a post-it. And they have a bulletin board up or a chalkboard up and they put all the post-its up. And so then if somebody comes in who really can't afford a drink of their own, they can take one of those post-its. And not only does that mean their drink is paid for, but it's just a really sweet gesture. So anyway, uh, there's a link for that on YouTube and it'll be on Facebook later. But it looks like most of you are coming from YouTube today anyway, so it looks like we're good. Uh, Amy Jalbert is here from Exhibit Associates in North Kansas City, just down the road. So hi, Amy. Good to have you. I hope you guys are getting all settled in your new space. I know you just moved over the summer, so that's really cool. Uh, okay, our next link that I want to share is um, Bob Ross which probably most of you are familiar. Bob Ross was a painter well-known on PBS for many years with his show, known for his fuzzy curly hair and his soft-spoken manner of talking about happy little trees <laughs> or happy little squirrels or whatever. <laughs> so, but Bob Ross somehow has, he's been gone for many years now, but he somehow has become quite the icon. And so he, they, they actually have opened up a museum now, or they call it the Bob Ross experience in, I forget what town it is. I think Muncie, Indiana. They just opened it up last month. And so you can go in and you can explore his studio. It's real interactive, I guess. And so they've got like some of his paintings. He never sold any of his paintings that he did for TV. And so they've got some of his paintings on display and stuff. So uh, anyway, so Bob Ross has his own museum now. <laughs> so, anyway, so there's an article, a link for that. I see Marco is here from Italy. Hi, welcome. Always good to have you, Marco. And Rama has shared her creative superpower. It's actually listening to client needs so we can provide them with solutions that create strategic memorability for them. Yeah. And actually listening is a superpower because let's face it, not very people listen these days or, or thoroughly listen anyway. So that's a very good superpower. 
All right, our next story that I want to share with you is um, in Hollywood, they had a drive through dinner. So a lot of these kinds of things I like to share because I want to start, you know, talking about creativity, start the creative juices flowing so that you can start thinking about ways you could maybe take this and incorporate it into the trade show world. So they hosted in the parking lot of the Hollywood Palladium, they hosted a drive through dinner and uh, they did it two nights and all together they had over 600 cars. And so basically it was just like a drive-in movie, I guess. They would come in and they had servers. And so of course the servers had the plexi face shields and they would come and deliver the different courses. So it was all like small plates and they would come deliver the different courses to the cars. So um, anyway, I thought that was kind of cool and clever. I see Matt is here from Champion Logistics, another one of our regulars. Welcome back, Matt. And um, so anyway, so, you know, and I've mentioned before, I still think that, you know, the idea of a drive-in trade show could be pretty clever. If somebody could pull it off. Haven't heard about, I only heard of one so far, a small chamber show somewhere. Can't remember where that was, but. Um, and then the next story is a fake commute. And I guess this is a growing thing because so many people, I, I pretty much have always worked from home most of my adult life, but for somebody who it's, this is new for them to be working at home and not, no longer having a commute. I mean, the benefits are, first of all, you have more time. Second of all, uh, less stress because they say that, you know, commuting typically was hard on people, you know, stress rates were high, blood pressure elevated, all that kind of stuff. But some people are having a lot of problems making that transition from home to work and then back to home in the evening. So some people are starting to do what they call a fake commute. And that can be like going for a walk or, um, you know, taking the kids to school, you know, just something. So you actually physically get out of the house, go do something and then come back. So anyway, um, yeah, that's, that's kind of a interesting concept. And then the next article is what it takes to lead through an era of exponential change. And this one comes from Harvard Business Review. And it's really, I think it's so appropriate, especially for us in this industry, because this is going to be, this has already been a time of huge change, but it's accelerated and it's going to be, you know, the, the change is not going to stop. I mean, this whole year has inspired things that are going to be ongoing in our industry and they call it 3d change and so it's perpetual pervasive and exponential and so it's a pretty long article i have to confess i've skimmed it i haven't read it really thoroughly yet but it's it really brings up some good points and they talk to a lot of different executives about ways to really lead through this kind of rapid change you know and a lot of the things that are happening are not necessarily things that might not have happened anyway, um, you know, like the transition to virtual and then eventually into hybrid events. That's something that <laughs> I've actually been trying to advocate for for a long time. But, um, you know, it's it just happens so rapidly and people are just scrambling. And so I think, you know, if we all want to be leaders in this industry, we really need to know how to lead through change. So I think that that'll be a really good article for you. And I see Shelly is here. Hey, Shelly, long time no see. Shelly with Momentum Events is here. So good to have. Um, and then next one is High Point Market. And I think I mentioned High Point a few weeks back. They were getting ready to have their market. Um, it's a little different, not really quite a traditional trade show because it is, you know, High Point Furniture Market. They have all these different locations of all the different showrooms, but they extended their show. So I think it's normally like six days and they did like 10 or 12 days. Um, I forget the actual details, but anyway, they were able to have a safe event. Uh, they spread out the traffic, you know, so that they didn't have all these people showing up all at the same time. They had a very safe event. Obviously, their attendance was way down. Um, I think it was about half what they normally have. But here's the exciting thing. The people they had 
were serious buyers. And we're talking serious, serious buyers. I mean, I heard some uh, of the vendors say that maybe they wrote more orders this year than ever, or at least in recent years. And then a lot of them said, like they sold out, the way a furniture market works is a lot of them, they'll sell their samples. So a lot of them sold out of their samples. Some of them are backlogged with orders. I mean, they just, they felt like it was successful. And that's what I want you to keep in mind as we go forward, because we know Whenever it is that the events start opening up again and the show floor is open, we're not going to see the kind of traffic we used to see, but you're going to see the people that made all kinds of effort to be there and jump through all kinds of hoops. So they're going to be serious buyers. And I also want to point out that the people that are joining you virtually are also going to be serious. A lot of them, you know, are going to be people maybe that you haven't met before, because the thing I'm hearing from everybody doing virtual shows, they're getting brand new attendees that they've never seen on the show floor for a variety of reasons. Some are budgetary. They've never been able to travel. Some are accessibility issues. They just physically can't come to shows, which we actually have a guest coming up next week that's going to talk more about that. But, um, you know, there's just so many reasons to be excited about going forward and what we're going to be seeing. So anyway, I thought that was encouraging news. Then just a couple of other quick links here. And I see we have Nicole with Exhibit Expressions here from Denver. So welcome, Nicole. Good to have you. All right. And then the next one is, oh, talking about creativity and innovation. I am excited to see how this one comes together. The Big Gear Show, which is a show for outdoor um, marketing, outdoor sports. They are going, they've just announced they are going to take to the great outdoors for their show. So now it's not going to be a drive in. You know, we were talking about that, but it's going to be outdoors in uh, Deer Valley Resort in Utah. So it's, I, I'm very anxious to see. And those of you who were with us last week, Kenji was here. Uh, I don't know if Kenji's on today or not, but he's involved in that show. So I'm hoping that we have kind of an inside track. We can get some, some scoop on what's going on there. But anyway, I thought that was very innovative. And Danielle says, we want to see the serious buyers and participation. Yes. Yes. And I think that is like I said, that's one of the most encouraging things right now is people are so serious because they they want, they need the opportunity to go to these shows and to have this interaction and to meet new vendors and find new products and new solutions. So we can't lose sight of that. And we've got to stay focused during this time and keep doing the virtual events, even if you don't like them, even if they're not what you want that's the way to keep connected to the buyers right now. And the buyers are looking They're They want to buy, they need to buy. So keep that in mind. All right. Al is here from New York, New Jersey. <laughs> I always love how you're like from both Al. <laughs> One foot on either side of the state line, right? <laughs> All right. And then the last link I want to share with you, and then we will get started with our guest speaker today, our guest uh, conversation, I'll say. Um, eight retail tech innovations that trade shows might be wise to pay attention to. So, you know, there's eight different things on there, but a couple of them I just wanted to highlight was vending machines. Hmm. How might we use vending machines on the show floor? Uh, scan and go. And virtual queuing or, you know, virtual queuing up lines instead of like, you know, you actually take a ticket, you know, you have a virtual app or an app to, you know, virtually put you in line. So I see that being a possibility for registration. So anyway, creativity is everywhere. And so for today, I, um, like I said, we've got a guest who a lot of you are familiar with because you know him from behind the scenes. But I actually, and some of our guests that we've had on this year are, you know, some people I've known for a long time, some of you I've known for a long time, some people, some of our guests are people that I've just discovered this year, maybe one of the other virtual conferences that I've attended. Today's guest, I actually met when I was still a teenager, 
<laughs> and we collaborated on our very first creative project the year we were dating. Um, I was editor of the college yearbook and he was the photo editor. And we pretty much have been collaborating on creative projects pretty much ever since. Um, he helped me with my books, you know, the books that I've written for the trade show industry. Um, he's also helped me host events. He, we've co-produced a couple of, I guess you could say, non-traditional types of books, um, one of which we may talk about a little bit more when we get into the conversation. And we're currently working on a young adult novel together. We've led tea tastings and cooking classes and just all different kinds of things. So you know him from behind the scenes, but I'd like you to actually have the opportunity to meet my husband, Alan Arnold. So hi, everyone. <laughs> Welcome to the front of the camera. <laughs> Thanks. Well, starting out talking about creativity, you know, you and I, we sometimes we have to work hard to rein it in because we're too creative, True. I think. <laughs> True. Lots of ideas. Yeah, yeah. I am, I know I'm especially bad with that. He helps me a lot because I have a tendency to just like, you know, <laughs> if you if anybody's ever watched the British version of um Sherlock with uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, where they like have all the things flying of showing all his thoughts. That's how my brain works. Mm -hmm. So, so Alan has to somehow sometimes help me rein it in. <laughs> but talking about creativity, I know you've done a lot more research on it than I have. But um, you know, one of the things that you and I always do is you know, getting out and and finding new ways to or new inspirations. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, going to, of course, we can't do some of these things now, but going to right. museums and galleries and things like that. But I know you've got, through your research, you found some of the famous people, famously creative people mm -hmm. in history that do different things to, to uh, inspire them. So share some of those stories. Well, I think a lot of people don't know that uh, walking, especially walking in nature, really changes your perspective uh, Beethoven would take walks after lunch and he would take uh, his staff paper and pencil just just for the inspiration so he could have something to write it on Charles Dickens would walk for miles now Marlis and I have walked a lot this year as you know and uh, I think we maybe walk a couple miles but one morning at 2 a.m. Charles decided I want to walk to my country home. So at two o'clock in the morning, he heads out to go almost 30 miles to go to his country home. Wow. And, in the middle of the night. <laughs> in the middle of the night. Um, there's just uh, so many examples of people taking walks and getting out. It kind of frees your mind. Uh, Einstein said he would let his mind just wander. And I think a lot of people need to wonder, almost like children, you know, to be curious about, about the obvious things, things that you're used to, the routine things, take different routes. Um, I think it's good to uh, almost trick the brain into trying new and different things. How many of you have brushed your teeth with your non-dominant hand? Yeah. That's or that easy. Driven, driven a different route to or from work? or tried to write with your other hand, it, it really does trick you and make you really think differently. And Marco says that his creative superpower is working on how to inspire emotional connections to companies and clients and trace their emotional journey in physical and virtual events with the help of technology. Hmm. So yeah, in, in emotional connections, that definitely is a creative superpower of, you know, finding ways to give people. I know I would say my creative superpower is using words and working mm -hmm. with words because you know, spending my, pretty much my whole life trying to be an author, which I finally yeah. am and, and writing and, and um, teaching, you know, it's helping people try to, mm -hmm. um, try to connect in ways that they might not otherwise. Right. And I see Nicole says she's hearing a bit of an echo. Unfortunately, it's because we're, we're in different rooms, but it may still be close enough that it's picking Alan's mic is picking me up. So I'll try to talk maybe a little softer, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so talking a little bit more about creative inspirations, um, 
you know, some of the different things you could, we talked about taking a walk. Mm -hmm. um, another thing is, you know, figuring out who creative people that you can model after. So, you know, um, we talked a little bit about that when we were preparing this of, you know, trying to think what would this famous person do? Mm -hmm. So do you have any examples? I can't remember if you had any examples of, of well, that. It's, it's, it's interesting to have uh, looked into this. People don't think of uh, sleep, but, you know, lack of sleep affects us in a variety of ways. And I've found that a lot of the creatives either slept really long hours they would sleep nine, 10, 11 hours a night or the opposite. They would sleep just very little at night and then nap throughout the day. And it's been scientifically proven that naps are not a bad thing. They actually help. Um, Einstein, again, would nap after lunch. Um, Edison would uh, nap up to three hours a day. He wouldn't admit to it, but his staff knew that he was napping maybe on a lab table during the middle of the day. Uh, <laughs> Churchill, his afternoon nap was non-negotiable. Hmm. Every day, it just happened. And the same with JFK, uh, Kennedy. His uh, staff knew that no phone calls, no folders, no paperwork, unless it was a true emergency, hmm. they would close the curtain, he napped. And then he went right back to the Oval Office and went right back to work. So napping is not a bad thing. It actually re-energizes, refreshes you. Um, your subconscious mind kicks in and, and you're able to connect things that maybe you weren't able to connect. We've all woken up in the morning after thinking hard about a problem the day before. And all of a sudden you're like, oh, why didn't I think of that before? That's the value of the subconscious mind kicking in. Well, and it's interesting to hear how like powerful people take that. Maybe that's where the term power nap comes from. Well, <laughs> but I know that, that there's be. companies now that are actually having um, uh, napping pods where mm -hmm. the like these little chairs with domes on them where you can right. actually go and take a or, nap or, during work hours. Or rooms that are set aside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Nicole says her creative superpower is connecting dots to craft a picture of the situation or solution others might not be able to see. That is a really good superpower mm -hmm. to be able to connect the dots because a lot of people, let's face it, a lot of people don't have that ability. So I think, you know, a lot of times when we say creativity, I think people think, you know, oh, well, I'm not an artist or I'm not a musician, but creativity can take so many different forms of, you know, right. creative thought and how to process things and how to put them together in different ways. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I love how everybody's sharing their creative, mm -hmm. creative ways, especially of how they work with their clients, because yeah. that, I think that is really key. Well, and it sounds like these people have honed in, they know what their superpower is and, and they're out there mm -hmm. to help people. Because we all remember yes. when we were in grade school in kindergarten or first grade, if the teacher said, okay, who out there is an artist? Well, everybody's hand went up. Everybody's yeah. an artist. Everybody's creative. Well, then life kicks in. You have people that by the time they're in fifth, sixth, especially up into junior high, if the teacher asks, well, who's creative? Who's an artist? You might have one or two hands come up and you know the hands that are going to come up because you too think they're the, they're the best drawer or craftsman or whatever they're doing. And I just don't do anything. So life kicks in, you start comparing yourself, you start looking at your peers and you're like, well, I can't do that. So you give up. And unfortunately for some people that kicks into a lot of areas of life. And then you just don't participate. You just kind of roll along every day until all of a sudden one day you realize, I don't need to compare myself. I'm the only one of me there is, and my superpower is different than everybody else's. Well, it's true. It's true. I think a, a lot of are stifled by the fact that we're trying to compare ourselves to somebody else. I know, talking about artistic, I grew up with somebody who was highly artistic, now illustrates <laughs> children's books. And yeah. so, you know... <laughs> was no way to try to compete with him. So I was just glad he was a year ahead of me in school. So finally, my senior year of high school, I had an opportunity. <laughs> uh, 
Um, uh, but one thing is practice too. I mm -hmm. mean, creativity, it, it's like a muscle. I mean, you've got to exercise it, it and, and do things with it. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and I liked what you were saying when we were talking about this last night about how, you know, not everything is going to be a winner. <laughs> right. Well, and that's one reason a lot of people keep journals. President John Adams wrote 51 journals. Uh, da Vinci, as you know, wrote a ton of journals, drawings, mm -hmm. and, and Einstein is rumored to have written 80,000 uh, pages. So journaling is not necessarily just for your thoughts and your feelings, but um, it's, a, it's a record of what you're thinking. How many times, again, have you had a great thought, you didn't write it down or record it, and then you can't remember it? Oh, Yeah. <laughs> And you talked about, you know, uh, experimenting. I mean, experimenting is part of life. You, you try mm -hmm. it, you fail, you learn from it, you go on. Imagine Edison. You're creating a light bulb. How many, how many times are you going to try it? A yeah. uh, hundred times, 50 times, 20 times. Well, I tried three things and it didn't work. Try 10,000. The next time you're creating a product or writing a book or a paper and trying to think of a title, imagine if you had to write your title. 10,000 different ways to find the right one. A lot of people wouldn't stick with it. Well, and that's true because we do have this feeling, this need to be perfect. And, you know, mm -hmm. we've got to get it right and we got to knock it out of the park. And, you know, and, um, you know, it's just, it's not always going to be that way. So one of the sayings that I love, and I don't remember where, where I first heard this, but, you know, learn to build the plane as you fly it. Right. And, you know, and so I, I try to do that now. And so, and you know, a lot of times, mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of times I do have an idea and it's like, I just start running with it before, you know, and I'll start telling people I'm doing it or, or whatever. And I'm like trying to figure it out on the, on the back end as I go along. Well, I kind of right. did that this spring when I did the uh, <laughs> uh, virtual event trailblazer summit. So, right. but, um, but it is, it's true. It's like, you know, don't wait until you've got it perfect. Just do mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. And another thing is don't be afraid of being outside, you know, way outside the lines. Right. Um, one of my favorite commercials, mm -hmm. uh, my favorite ad campaigns of all time was when uh, Apple did the Think Different campaign. And so the, the ad that they did was here's to the crazy ones. And mm -hmm. you'll see in the links, I've got a link to that, but uh, I love, I absolutely love the message of that because it's, you know, here's to the people, you know, the, the uh, square pegs and the round holes mm -hmm. and the people that are way outside the lines because it's the crazy ones who really changed the world. Mm -hmm. I mean, if everybody just tried to keep marching in the same line, right. we wouldn't make progress. And so right. I think that that's something that we sometimes get way too caught up in is, you know, feeling like, well, you know, I'm crazy or I'm weird or, you know, this is not going to work. Well, stop with the limiting beliefs and just, you know, color outside right. the lines. Right. Are there lines? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Who says there has to be lines, yeah. right? <laughs> exactly. Well, well, and actually it uh, kind of leads me to another thought of uh, conversation. Just because you're stuck on a problem doesn't mean you have to be the one that has to solve it. Um, you have coworkers, you have peers, you have people that maybe are in completely different industries. I mean, there are people out there that, that get stuck on a problem and so they actually stop and they read magazines or watch videos of different industries because who knows, mm -hmm. maybe that industry is doing something like you talked earlier. You can be walking through a mall someday again yeah. and uh, see something It's like, oh, I never thought about doing it that way. Um, if you think of a lot of uh, combinations, you have uh, Lennon and McCartney. Mm -hmm. jobs in Wozniak. And this one fascinates me. Um, there was a group, uh, Henry Ford, Edison, Firestone, and Burroughs. They would actually get together not only to uh, brainstorm, but during the summers, they would actually get together and, and go out camping together just to be together, <laughs> go back and forth with conversation. And uh, I can only imagine being a fly on the wall in some of those conversations.
Yeah, yeah, it would have definitely been interesting to hear that yeah. conversation. Well, and another idea too that we talked about is just trying to remove yourself from the situation of almost having a conversation with yourself and giving yourself mm-hmm. advice. You know, if you can if you can take yourself out of the center of the problem mm-hmm. and and try to look at it as if you were giving advice to a friend. Right. So, you know, that's another technique of, you know, how to creatively problem solve. Right. Well, then you have to also explain Expect the unexpected because you know things are going to happen. Things are going to pop up. Things are going to fall through, whatever it is. Expect the unexpected and allow it to happen. And um, then when the new opportunities come along, learn to say yes to them. Well, and I think that's a really good point for us to leave it on today is, you know, embrace the challenges, mm-hmm. embrace the opportunities and say yes mm-hmm. and figure out how to do it. Even, even if you have to build the plane as you fly it. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Alan. I appreciate you coming on camera today and sharing sure. your creative insights. And thanks to everybody who joined us today. A um, couple of quick announcements I want to just give you as far as calendar, what's coming up. Next week, like I said, we will be back. We will have a guest here to talk about accessibility, both online and offline. And then we'll take a break for Thanksgiving week. We'll be back on December 1st. And then I have something special planned for you that's going to be a little bit different on December 8th. So hopefully by next week, I've got a little more details. I can fill you in on that. But um, we're going to do something where we can kind of relax and celebrate and enjoy just the the camaraderie of our virtual lunch group. So thank you so much. Thanks. Classic exhibits was here today. I see. Mm-hmm. And so thanks to everybody who joined us and we will see you next week for virtual lunch. Bye. Bye.